Hi, and thanks for joining me back. In this lesson, we will talk about the Composition Timeline Panel. As you can see, this panel connected to this one is called the Layers Panel. These two areas work together with the Preview Panel. When I click on the area of the panel then, the blue frame goes around this whole area. But we'll talk about this part of the panel right now, and later we'll talk about the other side. Let's make sure the view is on default. You can close this window, and we are ready to start. The first thing we see in this area is the duration of our composition. I can zoom out a little bit. And here I see that the duration of this whole composition is 3 minutes, as we set it at the beginning. Again. If you don't see the times as I do, you can click here while holding the control key. That way, it will display the duration of the composition in seconds and not in frames. Here, we can zoom in and zoom out. Another way to zoom in and out is to press Alt and then scroll with the mouse wheel. It also works with the equal and the minus keys. I usually use the mouse wheel or control it manually from these icons. You can also move from this area. We can also move this panel from here. And now, let's meet our best friend in After Effects called the Time Indicator. With its help, we can choose to be at a certain point in our composition. If this video is 7 seconds, and I want to get to the second number 6, I can take the time indicator and place it here. I'll zoom in a bit and move here. If I stand here with the time indicator, I will pass the layer so that I won't see anything on the screen because the layer is over. A common mistake we make as beginners is sometimes placing the time indicator after the layer like that. Then we don't see anything on the preview and think that the video or the layer is not there. To see the video again, we need to move the time indicator to the area where the layer is located. Now let's see how we can move around in this area. You can move by moving the area with the middle click on the mouse, like that. Or by holding the space key and dragging the area with the left click on the mouse. Another method of zooming in and out is through the Time Navigator. We can pull it to the sides like that. It's just like zooming in and out from here. With the help of the Time Indicator and the Spacebar, I can choose where I see the video from. So let's take the Time Indicator to start and press the Spacebar. And here is our video running. Here, the video layer is over, so we no longer see anything. Now you can press the spacebar again to stop the preview. Now let's talk about the work area. Let's understand what it is and what it is good for. I'll zoom in a little, and let's say I don't want to see the whole video. I want to see the video only from second 2 to second 4. Let's see how to do it. You will notice that under the time indicator there is a gray bar. It's called Work Area. With the Work Area's help, we decide where the time indicator will travel. Let's see how it works. If I stand here with the cursor, the icon of my cursor changes, which means, now I can drag the Work Area here. I will zoom out a bit, and I will also drag the Work Area from the end. Now if I press the spacebar, the time indicator will move only within the limits of the work area I set. This is very useful in cases where I want to see a specific part of the animation in the composition. You can also move the work area here, the time indicator here, and now I will only see the preview of this part of the video. As you noticed, to set the end of the work area, I had to move away and drag it from the end. 
Let's learn how to do it with a shortcut. I will bring the time indicator to where I want the start of the preview to be and press the B key. Then I'll move here and press the N key to set the end of the work area. Now press the spacebar and we will see the preview of only the work area we selected. For those who press the spacebar and the preview won't work, you can go to this panel called Preview. It can be found in Windows. And here, under Shortcut, make sure it's on Spacebar. This means that the Space key will serve as a play and pause button for us. Also, make sure to set all the settings as I did. Great, let's close it and move on. An important thing to know about the relationship between the time indicator and the work area is that if you press shift and move the time indicator, it will snap to the sides of the work area. Try to do it and feel it by yourself. To move from the beginning of the work area to the end, you can use the keys J and K. J will move the time indicator to the beginning of the work area and K to the end. If I want to get to the beginning of my composition, I can press the home key. Now let's return the work area to the way it was. I can drag it or move the time indicator to the end and press N. Another helpful shortcut is I and O. Let's say that if the layer started from here, I would bring the time indicator to the beginning and O to the end of the layer. As you can see, we can move the layer in our timeline, and if I want to bring the layer to the beginning of the timeline, then I move it while holding the shift key, that way, the layer will snap to the beginning. Now let's see why the work area is so important to understand. So here we see in the example that after I finished the whole animation, it ended at this point but my work area continues all the way here. Let's see what happens if we render the project. In the final rendering, you can see that after the animation ends, the video continues and shows a black screen. This happened because I didn't tell After Effects until where to render the project. After Effects renders what is only within the boundaries of the work area. It means I need to determine my work area. Now, even if the duration of my entire composition is 3 minutes, After Effects will render what was within the boundaries of the work area. Now let's learn how to cut the length of the entire composition. The duration of my whole composition is 3 minutes, and now I want to cut it so that it will be for 2 minutes. I'll bring the time indicator to 2 minutes. Press N. Right click on the work area and choose trim comp to work area. And now the duration of my composition is two minutes. And if I go into the composition settings using the shortcut control K, then I will see here that the duration of the composition is two minutes. Sometimes it adds one frame on its own, but it's okay. Don't worry about it. And if I want to return the duration to 3 minutes as it was, then I have to go to the composition settings using the shortcut, Ctrl K, and then change the duration to 3 minutes. So this is how we increase and decrease the length of our compositions. Let's do it together and learn some more useful shortcuts. Sometimes, it is difficult to hit a specific time point when moving the time indicator with the mouse. The time indicator can be moved frame by frame with a super handy shortcut. Hold the control key and press the left or right arrow. That way, we can place the time indicator at a very specific point in the timeline. And now, we have positioned the time indicator to the point we want. Now let's press the end key to finish the work area here. Now right click and select trim comp to work area. Excellent. Let's save the project, Control S. Get used to doing it every few minutes, even though the autosave is activated.
Now let's move on to the next thing on this panel, which is the markers. This is the icon on the side. Let's see what happens when I click it. A marker was created. It can be used as a bookmark or a reminder for me. I'll get a little closer. I can now move this marker wherever I want. To delete it, I will right click on it and select delete this marker. It's important to know that we don't have to create the markers from here. We can create them with an asterisk key. You can also create a marker with a specific number by pressing shift and one of the numbers. The most important thing to understand about the markers is that if I don't select any layer, then the marker will be created on the work area. And when I select a layer, then the marker will be created on this layer. We can also add a marker on the layer by right click, markers, add marker. This way, you can also see the shortcut for this action. Later we will understand when you should put the marker on the work area and when on the layer. Let's create one on the layer and one on the work area together. First, let's create one on the layer. So, select the layer, move the time indicator somewhere in the composition, and press on the asterisk key. Now click somewhere in the empty area to unselect the layer, and press on the asterisk key once again. You can delete all the markers by right-clicking on one of them, and then delete all markers. We will also delete them from here. Now let's talk about the advantages of the markers. Let's create a marker on the layer and see what use we have for it. Once we have created a marker, we can double click on it and then a small window will open where I can write down everything I want. Let's click OK. And now I have a marker with a comment. The problem is if I want to write something long. It can be really annoying if we have a lot of markers on top of each other in the project. I will delete this marker and see how we solve this problem. It's very simple. When we write the comment, go down a line with the enter key and continue writing whatever you want, as much as you want. Now I will only see what is written on the first line. You can always return to the note by double clicking on the marker and change the text. And if I want to delete the marker, I will right click on it and select delete this marker. All right, so we are done with this panel and I hope you understand what the time indicator is and what is the meaning of the work area. In the next lesson, we move on to learn about the main tools bar panel. See you in the next one.